Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I'm back out here at my father-in-law's uh, new construction home. Bare dirt, no plants, no nothing. So we've got to pretty much lay out the yard, design the yard, and, and get everything installed. Now I know a lot of folks when they do their install on their landscape, they like something dramatic and just over the top and complicated <laughs> is the way I look at it. Uh, I'm considerably more simple than that. So I just want to kind of share with you how I lay out a yard and the reasons why I lay it out like I do. Now, what's the one thing in your yard that you do the most of? Okay, I want you to think about that a minute. What do you think it is? What's the one thing you're gonna do the most of in your yard? You're gonna mow the grass, right? So, I want that to be the easiest thing in the yard to do. So, everything I do, as far as the way I design and lay my yard out, it's gonna be around ease of mowing. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is when I lay out these beds, I'm going to minimize my weed eating, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the weed eating or trimming with a string trimmer a big fat zero so that there is none of it. I doubt, you know how I edge my beds and create the nice clean lines by holding the weeder up and down? I doubt he's gonna do that. But I am gonna eliminate his need for a weed eater 100%. When I draw these beds out, now that's another thing I wanna do is make sure that my transition around the beds, meaning I'm gonna envision myself, he's got a Cub Cadet ride on mower, I'm gonna envision myself sitting on that mower and when I'm edging out around my beds, I'm gonna make that uh, drive with his mower as effortless and as easy as possible. Now I'm gonna kinda of start with my focal point and uh, I do know that we're going to put a crepe myrtle right here, big old notch is. And of course, I want to get it out away from the house because we're not going to butcher it. Uh, most people plant them too close to the house. And when they do that, they feel like they have to come in there and whack them off and big time no-no. So I'm going to come out here and the crepe myrtle will probably be about right here. So that gives me plenty of distance between here and the house. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and find out where I want the outside of my bed to be. Okay, so if that's my crepe myrtle, I'm, I don't necessarily need the same amount of distance from the grass to the crepe myrtle, from the crepe myrtle to the house. I don't really need that. What I'm trying to do is get rid of this slope and not have to grow grass on this little bit of a slope. Make my mowing easier and just by the way it might look. And I'm also, I have to keep in mind that I've got some storm drains right over there, okay? And my goal is to put those inside the bed. That way we don't have to mow a weed eat around them. So this right here looks like a good spot right here. I'm good with that. Now on this side, I want to replicate my arc and try to keep my arc consistent around the whole thing. That way when I'm mowing, it's just one smooth pass around the outside. Now this is non-irrigated, uh, so we're gonna do the best we can do to, to keep it watered. It actually rained last night, it was 10% chance, and of course that 10% changed to a 100%. But you can see I've got the arc coming around, and I wanna do away with my grass on this little abrupt drop off. I can just see that's gonna be a trouble spot. Uh, summer heat is gonna be front yard here. So I wanna minimize, uh, any chance of heat stress, or try to make it as less as possible, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, and I'm making my mowing easier. So I've kind of tapered that bed off and ran it right into the sidewalk. That way he can come right down the sidewalk mowing. And it's a real smooth transition. And just go right on around. Now the chances of us planting plants down this edge right here is slim to none but i don't want grass right there reason is we should not have to weed eat against the house uh, remember we're getting rid of the weed eating out here 100 percent 
So we're gonna put a nice uh, uh, symmetrical uh, bed or natural area that borders all the way down the house right here. And we'll probably do mulch at first, get a good base, and then I think we'll end up doing pine needles uh, year after year after that. So a couple foot off the house and uh, draw my beds out. You can see right there, that kind of attaches to this bed up on the corner. So you can see I've just kind of made a smooth fluid transition right there. So uh, again, it's all about mowing. When he comes around the corner, it'll be effortless. Now we're gonna do the same thing right here. We're gonna stick a crepe myrtle out here on the corner. Now I've got this gutter pop up right here. I've got to kind of work around. Now one thing I am thinking about, water runs downhill, right? Okay, and so downhill is that way. So I'm gonna plant this crepe myrtle a little bit above this gutter drain, because when it rains, that thing pops up and you can see where the water's been coming out. I don't want the root ball of this crepe myrtle sitting in water all the time. So I'm gonna put the crepe myrtle a little bit above that and make my bed based off where I put the crepe myrtle. So you can see where I've got the crepe myrtle over here, about right here off the corner and then I'm gonna come out a little ways where my bed is going to, to start out of the natural area. And I'm just gonna make a good even moon shape. I'm gonna tie it in over here where the, uh, the bed kind of picks up on the side of the house. And again, when I'm drawing this out with the paint, I'm thinking mowing. I'm visualizing myself sitting on a mower mowing and relaxing maybe i might have a little glass of sweet tea or something and i'm coming around this corner right here and i want it to be effortless all right so i've got my same two feet over there off the house and uh if i cut it too hard right here and go back in that's gonna make my mowing a little jacked up so I'm gonna make this bed a little bit bigger and kind of taper it in uh, with a smoother transition. So at some point in time, there's gonna be a big old patio back here coming off the back step. But for budget reasons, we're just gonna do grass now, work on the patio later. So I want my transition to mowing to be really smooth and fluid back here. So I've got some utility setups over here, uh, gas and air that I don't wanna put grass around. I don't want the weed eat around that. I don't want my string trimmer scratching this thing up so i just want it to be easy so i'm going to bring my bed out just a little bit and everything enclosed or everything from the grass to the house is going to be mulch you can see i kept it simple come around the corner of the house and made a straight line all the way out uh, just just to make the mowing easy all right so here i am in the ditch uh, we call it a ditch here in north carolina i think some folks call it a culvert I don't, I don't know what you call it. It's a ditch to me. I hate mowing a ditch. I despise it with a passion. At my house, I got rid of the ditches and filled them in and flattened it out. Now we can't do that here, unfortunately. I had DOT come out and approve mine at my house. It simply has to do with the lay of the land, okay? Um, I'm sitting on a flat enough spot and the water broke both ways. It just worked out in my favor. Here we can't do that. There's a major cross line. Cross line is a, the big pipes that go under a main road down there at the intersection that collects water from all the way up here and all the way back up there. So we can't fill the ditches in here. It would be against the law. And not to mention it would be totally and completely unsafe. So we have to do what we can do with the ditches. So number one, the first thing I want to do in this ditch is get rid of my weed eating. 
get rid of my trimming, string trimming. So from the road to this first column, I'm nine feet. So I'm gonna come nine feet off the other side. Then I went three feet from the driveway out. So I'm gonna go three feet from the driveway out over here. Now you can see I got my nine foot away, three foot out. I'm gonna come another three feet. Right there. I'm just gonna taper this in a little bit. Just like that. Now when he's coming down through here mowing, it's an easy, simple turn, just like that. He can go on down and turn around in the road. Now right here where this uh, pipe is at, we're gonna come in about here and here. And we're gonna line this area with rock, some type of a decorative river rock stone or something like that. So when the water comes through, it's gonna hit that rock, filter through and go through the pipe. And we're gonna match that on the other side. Up here will be mulch, and up here will be mulch, and then grass will be out here. So everything enclosed inside of this, on, I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone again on this slope. The grass may not do all that great, and you don't want to weed eat it. So I'm just enclosing it and making it natural area. Now, of course, when I'm doing my seeding around all this edging that I've created. I want to use a drop type spreader. I'll show you how this works. Now obviously I always recommend planting grass seed in the fall but new construction sometimes you can't uh, dictate when the house is going to be complete so in this situation we're planting in the spring. There's nothing we can do about it to get around it so we just got to do what we got to do right. Now I want to show you right quick with a good visual of why I use a drop type spreader to go around my edges first. You can see right here where the seeds drop right on that line and I'm watching that grass seed fall out of my spreader the entire time so I stay right on that line. You can also see right here where I meet up against the concrete. I'm letting a little bit of seed get on the concrete. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is come back and take my broom and gently broom this off right on the edge. That way all my edges on my concrete will be nice and thick. So now all I have to do is take my broadcast spreader, which has the impeller that covers a, a wider area than this. I'm gonna go ahead and put my grass seed out. So my GCI Turf Type Tall Fescue, I'm sowing it uh, on bare dirt at 10 pounds per thousand square feet. So that's 10 pounds of grass seed per every 1,000 square foot of turf area. I have 35,000 square feet of yard here. So that's 10 times 35 is 350 pounds. That's seven bags, seven 50 pound bags that I'm gonna evenly distribute over this entire area. I definitely wanna put down a starter fertilizer with grass seed. Anytime I sow grass seed, I like to put a starter fertilizer down. That's something with a high phosphorus. Uh, that's the middle number on the bag. I'm using X start today. And <clears throat> what that does is that'll kick this root system into gear uh, that the roots of this turf like that phosphorus and it'll give it a good head start. So hey, I want to thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share and tell all your buddies. If you're new, it's the first time you've ever seen me. Uh, I'm a, I own a lawn care company uh, right side of Greensboro, North Carolina. And kind of my niche on, online or YouTube is helping DIY folks, uh, people that want to manage their own yard, kind of get a, a pro take on doing that. 
And so we have lawn care guides and programs and products and all kind of cool things uh, that'll help you get your dirt right. Obviously, that's where it all starts and it'll help you have a nice yard too. So hey, thank you for taking time out of your day to watch. I appreciate it. I hope this video has been helpful. If you're gonna be doing a new construction anytime soon, this will maybe will help you lay out your bed so it'll make your mowing much easier. Make zero string trimming or zero weed eating and just overall make the property look nice and clean lines and defined and, and just basically easy to maintain. Thank you for watching. I'll check you later.